The Arabian Racehorse Podcast with Debbie Burst and Gary Cable. Another edition of Arabian Racing Podcast. This week, Gary and I will be looking at uh, the race we've just had at Wolverhampton, the 0-105 Baker McVie International Handicap, which was won by Al Kaiser. And then we'll be looking ahead to racing tomorrow at Wolverhampton with the zayanarabian.co.uk 0-65 Handicap. Uh, so, hi Gary, how are you? Very good, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, not so bad. And um, what have you been up to this week? Uh, just working in, you've heard my voice if you've been in a few betting shops this week and uh, on, I'm off, I'm working for, sorry, not off today, working off tomorrow, William Hill Radio later this afternoon and I'm not 100% sure how many there is, there was only six last week but on Sunday we're doing Hungarian commentaries from home, I think it's actually bizarrely quite a big card over there, I was having a brief look through it, I think there's a couple of group or local grade twos and grade ones, I think it's 10 races actually on Sunday so I'll be doing that. Oh, that sounds very interesting. And, and do you have any views on Hungarian racing so far? Um, no, their timekeeping is quite good, which I like. So that's the main thing. Um, I, I recognise a few of the horses that are, are clearly bought at the horses and training sales over here. Some of the perhaps um, lesser sales and um, they continue their careers out in Hungary. OK, so if we look now, uh, we look back now at the race at Wolverhampton. Previously, the Baker McVie International Handicap Stakes. I mean, you know, that was quite an open race to begin with. Obviously, a Bia Athba was a horse that we'd be quite interested in following on from her good run at Goodwood. Um, but obviously, Al Kaiser showed the benefit of, uh, of the race he'd run in Belgium, which obviously put him spot on. And I, I don't know about you, but I thought it was pretty impressive. It was quite a professional performance. It was very professional. Um, I thought it was very a very competitive race heading into the uh, into the contest and you know he was carrying top weight you could argue some of his form if you go back in titles him you know he's the class act of the race going into it rated 102 a bit slowly away but Alex Shadwick's getting a real rapport up with some of these horses that he obviously goes and rides um, on a regular basis at uh, James Owen's yard and look up the running what two furlongs out and just went gradually gradually clear um obviously where they go with him next is going to be an issue because his rating is going to be quite high or it is quite high now as a consequence. So um, he's sort of bordering on if we had more sort of perhaps listed races available to this horse, it'd be that type of class. I think it might even be up to group three, uh, three class really, but to carry that type of weight against some fairly unexposed handicappers and put them to the sword from, you know, quite a long way out. Um, I was quite impressed. Absolutely. And um, of the other horses that finished in behind, obviously we've mentioned to be at Athba, um, but uh, did anything else catch your eye at all? Um, oh, Avaya Athba, she ran, you know, she definitely, definitely ran, in, uh, definitely ran a race. Um, whether she would have benefited from another run, I mean, it was what, the best part of uh, two months since she last, uh, she last ran, wasn't it? But uh, yeah, she looked as though she might have, might just come on a touch for the run again. Jar has this slow progression with uh, with that horse. He obviously finished second behind his stable companion. The others in behind were a little bit disappointing. Um, the likes of Alive de Forge, who pretty much had the run of the race out in front and weakened uh, weakened out of it quite tamely, um, heading out of the uh, heading out on the turn back towards home as soon as he got headed. And Anfar, so I was a little bit disappointed with her as well. I think she's capable of much better. So be interesting to see what happens with her next time out in the end. I think she only beat one home, but she's definitely better, I think it's fair to say, than what we saw in the, in that race. I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, there were a few horses which were possibly ran a bit below par, or at least what we would have expected on their previous form. Um, I, I actually thought that for, for an unexposed horse, um, the run of kayak in, in six was a little bit surprising, but I think it's, it's good to see... Uh, um, some of the, the smaller owners and trainers getting a bit of a look in in, the, in these um, competitive races. Yeah, very much so. Uh, I mean, this is the type of trip, just looking at Kayak's pedigree, that is definitely going to suit him. I mean, he was massively out of the weights. He's got an official rating of, of 40, but he was only beaten 18 and a half lengths in the end. And if, if he can get the right kind of race in, that, in the right grade as well, I think that's going to be the key thing. I mean, his... His sire, you know, he was an endurance horse and he didn't actually make his 
debut on the track till he was 15. So the fact that, you know, this horse was racing last year at five, I mean, there was only a few runs and it was clearly, he's clearly a late developing horse. But yeah, it's, in, it's good to see a little bit of progress in terms of finishing position and a much better race for that horse. I mean, they, you know, beating horses rated, what, 90 and above and three of them as well. Um, so he's a horse that we might see a little bit better off next year. Well, I'm not sure what the plan is if he's going to run again this campaign, but over a staying trip, which will be perhaps more in keeping with his pedigree in the right grade, I'm sure there's a race in it. And if we look forward now to uh, the race tomorrow at Wolverhampton, which is the Zayn Arabian Stud .co.uk 0-65 handicap. Um, this is over a mile. We've got a full field of 13. Um, Peter Hammersley has got a very strong hand in this. Uh, we've got a few other runners. James obviously has got three runners for three different owners. Um, it, it's a very open contest, would you think? Yeah, it's that sort of typical mix that we tend to get now in this type of grade of seasoned sort of veterans, the likes of Popstar, Zane's Achilles, um, so we could throw uh, Samo Art into that bracket as well, but she's only seven. Um, and the, the other mix of unexposed horses, the three-year-olds and the four-year-olds, the likes of um, Altabari, um, uh, Mustafid, I suppose you've got to throw into that bracket as well, Seraphim, Porter, uh, two. Um, so quite a lot of unexposed horses in the race for making their handicap debuts. Lots trying headgear for the first time. It's, um, I must admit, I, when I was looking through this race, usually in this type of grade, you, you can pick out a horse where you think, okay, that's where we'll start and we'll work our way around that. But I, I found it very difficult in, in this in this uh, particular race. Couldn't agree more. I mean, if, although obviously it's it's a uh, slightly different distance of seven furlongs and it's run on turf, a number of these horses met last year in uh, the final handicap on Dubai Day and in which Popstar uh, ran a brilliant race, I thought, to come out on top. If we just go back over that race and, and look at a few of the, the horses in there, um, what would you say that you could draw from that, possibly which might have an effect on the race on, on Saturday? Well, there were, there were a few, obviously, um, in behind that re -oppose. Um Bin al Ri, who you know, is still a maiden, and Zane's Achilles, who had obviously won this race before. Popstar obviously ran quite well in this race previously, and shaped as though you know, that she was capable of winning races off, off her current handicap. Mar I thought Martin Dwyer gave her a fantastic ride on this occasion, and she was, uh, she was produced inside the, uh, the last furlong just about to ultimately win, uh, win going away from, uh, from Marawit. Bin Ali wasn't beaten far in fourth, kept on well in the closing stages. The cheap pieces were on um, on this particular occasion. This horse is yet to win a race, but has definitely shown as though you know, there's, there's ability there. And I think he's more than capable of winning a race. He's got a bit of form here as well, which will help at, uh, at Wolverhampton. He just tends to get going a little bit late in his races, can often run the same type of race. I mean, he flashed home to finish in the frame in this Newbury contest the year previously. He did exactly the same um, back in uh, July of last year without re ever really looking like he was going to win. Um, but he was fourth on this occasion. Zane's Achilles was further back. He finished seventh now. This was a race, again, that he'd won previously. And um, he, too, has got form here at Wolverhampton, if you go back far enough in his career, which will be a big, big plus. I think the fact that there's a decent field here will hopefully mean they go a good gallop, which will definitely suit his style. Um, and the fact that he's got a decent record in this type of grade, and I was looking through his past performances, obviously sort of a plus as well, as he drops down into 0-65 to, uh, company, I think, for the either fifth or sixth time, and he's yet to finish out of the first three in that type of grade and he's won two of them so okay it's his seasonal appearance it's a seasonal appearance for all of those three that i've just um sorry not for bin al but for two of those three that i've just mentioned um but they've you know that pair have shown that they can go well fresh before zane's achilles and pop star okay they're entering the veteran stages of their career and i believe zane's achilles is only going to have two more runs at most a bit they might be tempted i suppose if he wins this race to retire him retire him on the spot but the way that the race is hopefully going to pan out um, I would just favour Zane's Achilles. I think the jockey book is interesting. I think the jockey booking on Popstar is also interesting. Sam Holdsworth has gone to uh, Simon Walker to ride the, to ride her. Um, but Zane's Achilles was my, where my pin came down for the uh, for the race sponsors. Absolutely, and I think you know Zane's Achilles or, or Tommy, as he's known at home, is uh, he's always been one of my favourite horses. And I think you know going back over his past form, as you say, he's got a, a great record over the years he's been very consistent 
the last time he raced off this mark of 60 was um, when he won first time out at Taunton. So he's, he's clearly got it in him. It, I guess always the, the worry in this sort of race would be a young improver coming forward. And possibly that might be a horse from even from his own stable like Al Tavari, who's, who's certainly caught the eye on... Uh, on his last couple of runs at Wolverhampton last year when um, he he certainly ran very well as a three-year-old against older handicappers. And again, last time when he probably didn't get the clearest of runs. No, he, he looked a little bit of a, a work in progress. I think it's fair to say last season. Obviously, he was only three and he showed much more on his final start over this course and distance as well, which goes well for his chances. He kept on well in the closing stages that day. And in that race um, here over slightly further, which was a better quality race earlier on in the season, again, he didn't get the, the clearest of luck in running. Um, Arwen Porter uh, also ran in that race, as to uh, Darkian, Zane Zyperian, and also uh, Bin Al Ri um, as well. Um, so I, I, you get the impression there's definitely more to come from, from this horse. And he's off the mark where I think, you know, we should be capable of definitely winning a race or two. Um, whether it may well be that we need another um, year just to sort of hit the um, or physically develop into um, into a, the horse that they you know they want him to be, I think there's a fair chance they'll end up rated a lot higher than this. You know, certainly at his peak when that will come. They're trying to work out when that will come is obviously easy, but he's shaping as though his turn isn't too far away. That that is for sure. And the fact that he comes into the race a bit more exposed than one or two of the others is obviously you know, also a big plus. I no, couldn't agree more, Gary. And I mean, of the other horses, um, I mean, I think a horse like Samawat, who, you know, proven over this trip, winner on the poly track, obviously not quite the same as a Tapita. And, um, you know, it it's, can be confusing sometimes to try and compare form too much of different tracks, albeit that it's, it's, it's the all weather surface. Um, you know, a, a small trainer, you know, they've, they've got Charlie Price back on board, who did win on her before. But I think for me, you'd want to see her have a run before you got too involved, maybe, um, and placing a bet on her. But it would be nice to see a good run from from horses of that calibre. Yeah, very much so. Um, she obviously hasn't been with the the Connolly team uh, too long. The Connolly's have had lots of success uh, down the years in Arabian races. They've been training at least for the 50, maybe even longer than that back, uh, maybe even slightly further back. I'm not 100% sure, but they've been obviously training for, for quite some time. I remember those old... Uh, black and red colours that we used to see um, with horses such as Rayhan and uh, and Leo the Moor and one or two others. Um, but yeah, they've obviously not had this horse very long. It is a seasonal reappearance, whether she's been for a gallop at Wolverhampton, I'm not just sure. They are obviously a massive, they're based in the north, so uh, the northwest area, I think, from memory. So they're not massively too far away from Wolverhampton if they wanted to take her uh, for a race course gallop. But um, yeah, <laughs> this. This is this kind of, and this, you'd want to be seeing a bit more from her in this type of grey. The fact that she was able to win a maiden, she kind of went off the boil after that, didn't she? Um, she ran okay a couple of times, I thought, actually, in races that were, you know, probably a little bit out of her grade last season. Um, but yeah, in, in terms of in terms of support, you'd maybe want to see a little bit more before getting involved. That said, we know that you know there's a little bit of backlash there. She was to uh, to have uh, appreciated the uh, the uh, long break that she's had. Absolutely. Um, and um, looking at, at the runners um, throughout, obviously Arwen Forter, James has done so well with his racing club. Clearly, obviously for his supporters, they'll, they'll be hoping for a good run from her. She's quite clearly off a workable mark now, but she has been a little bit disappointing. And, you, you know, you'd, you'd hope that she progress further now in, in this grade. Yeah, very much so. Um, obviously, she was fifth in that uh, race, the race that Altabari was fourth in here. Last time out, uh, I think the step back down in Spirit World probably helped Arwen Forter. Um, the draw perhaps could have been kind of still 13. It's a fairly quick run, obviously, to that bend over the extended mile trip. In fairness, that could easily work one or two ways if she dropped, and it might well work to her advantage here if they go quite quickly into that bend, which they could well do because it's a sharp run to that turn. You should imagine one or two of these are going to want to be up there fairly prominently. So, yeah, the draw's got to be a bit of a concern. Um, she's not from six now in her career, but um, yeah, there's, there's, there's probably a race or two in her. Um, but as I say, certainly from tomorrow's point of view, the draw certainly could have been kinder. No, agreed. And um, Jamie Plum, she's got two in the race. They're both ex-French horses. They all seem to look as though they perhaps want a little bit further than this. 
Yeah, uh, D'Artagnan was uh, eighth on uh, UK debut. That obviously came in that uh, Mezuna race, which Altavari, Armand Forter and, and Bin Ri all ran in. Comes back down um, in trip here, which I wouldn't be too sure would be a positive. Um, and Gurko de Tenel down at the bottom, obviously ran in the, uh, the UK derby on, um, on his um, UK debut and was well down the field in that tomato in which Tufan won at the back end of September. Handicap debut, you'd want to see some improvement, I think, before getting involved, but this is certainly an easier task than the two races that, uh, that he's ran in in the UK to date. And obviously we can't um, round, round up the race without mentioning the, the top horse muster feed. Um, to be fair, you know, he's, he's looked uh, when he was a three-year-old that he could progress. Um, you have to worry when a horse starts its career in blinkers. Um, they've obviously given up with the idea of blinkers now and have gone for a hood. Um, you'd still want to see a bit more on the, on the basis of what he's shown so far. But, you know, the change of headgear could, could bring about the improvement required. Yeah, and obviously, you know, this is the, in effect, I suppose you would probably argue the easiest race that he's ran in to date, obviously, in his honest handicap debut off a, a fairly lowly um, rating. You'd have to improve on what we've seen so far this campaign, though. I mean, he was well beaten on his seasonal reappearance, beating the best part of 60 lengths and almost 30 lengths last time out here. Both, uh, both of them here, both in maiden races. Lewis Stewart, who takes the ride, did at least ride him last time out. So um, he, will, he will have got, got to know him a little bit better, but he was well beaten on that occasion. But as I say, different headgear, lowest um, or the easiest opportunity that he's had um, to date, top weight to shoulder, but um, yeah, as I say, he's coming up against quite a few exposed horses, and he obviously isn't one of those. Absolutely. And uh, I spoke to Pete Hamsley, who obviously he has five runners in the race. And uh, if we will just pass over to uh, the conversation I had with him uh, for earlier this week. Hi, Debbie. I'd like to start by saying a huge thank you to Paul Simmons for his generous sponsorship of the Zane Arabian Stud Handicap at Wolverhampton on Saturday and uh, I think everybody would agree that it, it's fantastic to see an Arabian race with horses belonging to 12 different owners. Uh, this clearly indicates that there needs to be more races of this type on the Arabian racing calendar. However it's still disappointing that there were four horses balloted out. It, I think it's vitally important that for the future of the sport uh, all owners and horses are catered for. This year has obviously been very difficult and uh, for all involved. But go, going forward, we we must ensure that UK Arabian racing remains inclusive and uh, does not become exclusive. Anyway, looking forward to Saturday's race. All of our runners go into the race with a live chance. Uh, if I start with the two Zayn representatives... Uh, firstly, we've got Zane's Achilles. Well, he's he's been a grand servant to to everybody here. He's won nine races, has been placed countless times, and um, this race is likely to be his penultimate start. So uh, we're hoping that he he can run well. Uh, he goes into it off off his lowest handicap mark for six years. So we're hoping that uh, he puts in a good show on Saturday. Uh, next we've got his Achilles half-brother, Zane Zyperian. Uh, this will only be his fourth start, and he's, he's going the right way, and um, he seems to be improving with every run, so I'm hoping that uh, this run on Saturday will be his best race to date, and he puts in a good performance. Next we've got Bin al -Ri. Um He's a horse that... He's he's run two or three very very good races, but hasn't lived up to the potential. I believe he has, and uh, the, this particular race he's, he'll be running off his lowest mark so far. And if we couple that with the first time blinkers that uh, he'll have on, well, he he should he should run a very big race. So let's hope he puts it in. Uh, the fourth horse that we've got is Altabari. Now he's most definitely going the right way. Uh, he was very unlucky last time in his last time out at Wolverhampton. 
did not get the run of the race and uh, he should have finished a lot closer but anyway he's fine and if he gets a clean run this time he should be in with one hell of a chance and uh, that brings us on to our final hopeless in the race <clears throat> Jamana Athbar uh, she she's the least experienced of our five she's only had two maiden runs she's been she's backward been very slow to come to hand that said her recent work at home has been a lot more encouraging and I do expect her to make a bolder show this Saturday uh, but it is a very competitive race you could probably make cases for for most if not all of the horses but uh, so it should be an exciting race hope all ours run well hope everybody uh, has a good time and uh, may them all come back safe and sound. Thank you, Pete. And thank you to the sponsors, Zayn Arabian Stud, and also to the Emirates Breeders Programme, who've been supporting many of our races this season. The Emirates Breeders are also sponsoring our next race, the Emirates Breeders Novice Stakes, which will be run at Wolverhampton on the 22nd of October. I look forward to speaking with you. Um, we'll review this race and, and, and look forward to that race next time. Thanks, Gary. Thank you.